Amen. Isaiah 55. Let's take a look at verse number two. It says, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. I want to minister this morning on the, the title of the message. I came up with this title. It's time to eat. It's time to eat. We'll explain it as we minister. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, I just thank you this morning for the awesome opportunity to minister your word. And Lord, I ask right now that you will give me the words of wisdom, the words of knowledge, the words of understanding. Father God, that you will give me utterance to open my mouth boldly and speak as you would have me to speak. Father God, I pray that this morning your people hear your voice and my voice. Let the body of Christ here, the Lighthouse Freedom Center, be edified, built up, strengthened, refreshed, revived in the inner man like ne never before. Lord, let it not just be information, but let it be an impartation of your spirit to bring the grace of God upon your people so they'll not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do. Father, I lift up every person under the sound of my voice. I pray for strength in the inner man. I pray that whatever is going on outside the church, I cancel the assignment of the enemy. Even right there here right now doing your business, sitting under your word, you're demolishing strongholds and the assignment of the enemy is coming to naught. It's coming to nothing. It's going to vanish away very quickly as they sit under the word. Father God, I declare healing over this, this church, over every person that's dealing with any sickness or disease. I declare the word of God over this church that by the stripes of Jesus, the people in this church are healed of all sickness and disease. Father God, I bind every devil, every imp that is trying to hinder or bind up your people, and I declare that they go free right now. I loose the Holy Spirit right now to bring freedom into the lives of your people. Father God, let them be at peace as your word comes forth in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, say amen. amen. You know, in a few moments, we'll be having a faith home graduation. Amen. Yesterday we had our chapel speakers uh, breakfast, and uh, I got an uh, opportunity to minister to the chapel speakers. And I told them, I'm saying it's not because I work here, but I told them that this ministry is one of the greatest ministries in the world. Ah! Come on. Because it's not just a ministry where we're just preaching the word and people come and go home. But we're sticking with individuals night and day, day and night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year through holidays. <laughs> no matter what, we're with those individuals. Even when those individuals leave the ministry, they can always have a place to come back to be connected back to the thing, the power that delivered them in the first place. You know, there's, there's a lot of ministries that do what we do, but the difference with this ministry, we don't, we don't send the people that we minister outside to raise funds to the ministry to keep the ministry going. That they can take 18 months of their life and dedicate their life to seeking God, seeking a relationship with the Lord, don't have to worry about no bills, don't have to worry about this, don't have to worry about that. They can totally dedicate their lives to seeking Jesus. We're not putting them out on the corner, shaking a bell, trying to get money to keep the ministry going. No, Jesus is the Lord over this ministry and he keeps the ministry going. I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So this is an amazing uh, uh, place with what's going on here. I know it may not get all the accolades. I know it may not be on Christian television, but how many people know that sometimes God saves the best for last? Sometimes what God is doing might not make it on major news outlets, but God is not into that stuff. He's into people's lives being transformed for real by the power of Almighty God. Somebody say for real. Real discipleship, yes. real training, yes. real confrontation, yes. real getting it, de dealing with people's attitudes and not giving up no matter what. Yes. Real ministry. Yes. 
I'm just preaching to you and you go home, see you later. No, we're dedicated. It's a great thing that happens here. But what I want to talk about today is spiritual eating. What are you eating spiritually? Now, I'm continuing on the theme, growing up to go up. That's the theme that the Lord has this year. Anybody been challenged in their spiritual walk since this word has been coming? That God is challenging you to, to lay down kitty land. Stop playing games. Get out of your attitudes. Get out of your mind. Get out of your will. Get out of your emotions. Live for God for real. I'm hearing a lot of testimonies, amen? But listen, there's a connection between your spiritual walk and your spiritual growth, and it's being determined by your spiritual diet. Somebody say spiritual diet. Spiritual diet. You walking in the will of God successfully and consistently will be determined by your spiritual diet. Everyone is a master at feeding the natural man. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We don't have to tell you about it. We don't have to preach about it. When you wake up in the morning, you're going to feed that natural man. When 12 o'clock comes or lunchtime comes, you're going to feed that natural man. When dinner time comes, you're going to feed that natural man. But as we go through the scriptures, you're going to find out that it's more important to feed your spiritual man than your natural man. And if you would be committed as you are with feeding your flesh and commit that to feeding your spirit, you're going to see your life go to a whole nother realm. Go to, uh, gentlemen, pull up Matthew 4.4. 4. But he answered and said to them, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So Jesus is saying right there that it's not just about your natural life, it's also about your spiritual life. That you can't truly live life just by feeding the natural, you have to live life by also feeding your spiritual life. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The rhema word and the logos word that is in your Bible is spiritual food for your spirit man. Look at your name and say, it's time to eat. <laughs> Gentlemen, pull up Proverbs 4.20. Let me say this. I was, I was listening to a guy the other day, and he was talking about, you know, sometimes we're, we're caught up in, in just emotions. And he says, God is a God of principles. God is op not obligated. If I do three spins around here, God's not obligated to do nothing. But when we got the word, <laughs> the Bible says he watches over his word to what? To perform it. If you want to see the move of God in your life, you got to get back to the word. Because God is not obligated to our formulas. He's obligated to his word. So that's why we take time to put up the word of God on the screen because I don't want you to be a church that's just led by emotions. I want you to be a church that led by the word of God, whether your emotions got it or they don't have it, that you got a foundation of the word of God. So we're not wasting time when we go to the word. I know some people, this is boring. Listen, it's spiritual food. It's making a deposit in your spiritual tank account. I'm not here to minister to your emotions. I'm here to minister to your spirit man because emotions go up, emotions go down, but your spirit man is the thing that's going to lead you into victory. And it don't need your emotions to do it. It needs the word of God to get the job done. Your spirit is crying out for the word. My son, attend to my words, incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Gentlemen, go back to the first scripture. 
My son, attend to my words. Give attention to the word. Don't give your attention to the problem. Give attention to the word of God. There has to be a place in your spiritual walk with God that you're giving time to give attention to the word. Now, I'm not talking about your favorite preacher. I'm talking about you opening up the book, welcoming Holy Spirit to lead and guide you into all truth and feed your spirit man. How many people know that Sundays is not enough? Wednesdays is not enough. You would not even do that to yourself in the natural, only eat on Wednesdays and Sundays. You eat every single day of the week because you need food to sustain your natural life. So why are you neglecting your spiritual life and, and living off a snack? Notice, he said, give attention to my word, spiritual food. He said they are life and health. They not only are life to your spirit, but they're health to your flesh. True life and true health is found in spiritual food. Gentlemen, 1 Peter 2.2. 2. In the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely crave the pure spiritual milk of God's word, for this milk will cause you to grow into maturity. So just like babies crave milk, you got to get to a place where you crave the word of God because without the word of God, you cannot grow. You may grow in hype. You may grow in running all over the place, but you will not grow spiritually. Somebody told me, Pastor, you don't jump around a lot. I don't. But you know where my feet stand. They've been standing here about 20 years. So maybe you move by that, but I'll move to, to the walk where these, foot, where these feet are landing, are planted, solid. Not tossed to and fro. God said, I made you like that so you can be a living example of no flip-flop but consistency through ups and downs, through trials, through tribulations that you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Do trees move? They don't move. They're solid. That's your weapon. I got my weapon. Use your weapon. I'm using mine. Amen? That works for you. Go for it. But make sure when you land that you're landing on a solid foundation. I see many people spin around right down 78th Street. Still spinning. Ain't found their way back yet. Because they got caught up with hype and didn't take the time to feed their spirit man to get rooted and grounded in the truth of the word of God. So when the music stopped, the hype stopped, they vanished away because their spiritual walk was based on the soulish realm, not the spirit man. I shared this with my wife. I said, I said listen, I, we're going to have some powerful services, but we're not leaving the word. We're going to take time and teach God's people. Because I don't want a revolving door church. I want people coming and staying. But it's only going to stay when you teach them how to live the word of God and how to use this stuff outside. That's my mandate from God. Let's move on. We got a graduation. Listen, you must crave it. You must long for it. You must want it. You must greatly desire it. Think of your favorite food, how you crave for it. You can see yourself consuming it. God said, crave my word like you crave that piece of fried chicken. I want you to crave my word. See, you, you can be driving down the street, not even thinking about eating, but you can pass 
Oh, well, give me a chicken place. KFC churches. Churches chicken. You ain't, you ain't even thinking about it. You all right. But just the sight, the smell begins to get your mind, your will, your emotions, your hunger going, and you will pull in, delay the trip to satisfy that hunger. And God said, I want you to get like that with my word. I want. I want you in your house, you walk by that Bible, I want it to have the same effect like church's chicken. I want you to say, I need that. I'm feeling empty. I'm going through some battles. I'm battling with some stuff. But there's something in that book that'll satisfy my hunger. I got to get in this thing. It's time to eat. It's time to eat. It's time to get my grub on. This is better than chicken. This will get you the chicken. And we got to get, God said, I want you to crave my word like you crave that chicken or that steak or that seafood, whatever. You fill in the blank. You know what it is. I want you to crave it. I don't want to be a drudgery. I don't, I don't want to have to, have to force you to do it. I don't want to have to allow tragedies to come into your life for you to get into the word. You know, a lot of people get in the word when they're in a tragedy. God don't want you to get in the word when you're in a tragedy. He wants you to live in the word to avoid the tragedies. The word will keep you away from tragedies. He said, crave my word like that piece of fried chicken. So don't stay on that point too long. You might, you might, you might make a distraction. <laughs> Notice, it said that the word will cause you to grow. Feeding on God's word will produce spiritual growth. In the natural, you can't control your growth, but you do control what you put in your body to assist in the growth process. Put in the word, and it will cause you to grow spiritually. That's why we are teaching the word, so you can grow, taking time to put scriptures on the screen. You didn't realize it, but you came to church to feed your spirit. That's what's happening. That's why it don't matter what the mind is saying, the will is saying. My call from God is to feed your spirit. Yeah. Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep. Yeah. Feed them. Yeah. What do they eat? They eat the word of God. Uh-huh. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time, to eat. it's time to eat. Put the word in and it will cause you to grow. This word is so powerful It will not only cause you to grow, it will build you up and build you up so strong to receive what God said. Gentlemen, pull up Acts 20, 32. Listen to this. Somebody say the word. word. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. My God. If you're ever feeling bogged down by life, pick up that word and read that word. Let's try. Let's try. Lord said, you're going to have to show them. I I got another illustration. but So so you're going through something. The devil's on your back. You know what? Devil, you a lie. I'm about to get built up. I'm about to use you as a workout in the gym. I'm about to get my buff on. I'm about to get built up. Hmm. Stack that Deuteronomy 28 on. Stack them on. 28, 1 through 14. Let me, let me read this and let me get built up out of this mess, out of this emotion stuff, out of this sadness, out of this struggle. Let me build myself up above it. 
Let me give above it. Right now it's on me. Let me get above it. The word will build you up to get above it. It will build your spirit up to get above it. If you can get above it, you can have authority over it. But you got to get your spirit above it. You got to work the word. You got to work the word when there's no praise team, when there's nobody preaching. You got to do this stuff at home. You got to pick up the book at home and build yourself up above it. And it shall. You might have to preach it. Tell your family, I might get a little loud in here, but uh, it's all right. I'm not mad at nobody. Just mad at the devil. I'm about to start. I'm about to build myself up. And it shall come to pass. If thou hearken diligently. Mm. See, what's happening in your mind is leaving the problem zone and it's going into the solution. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do his command, which I command thee this day, that the Lord will set me on high above all these nations of the earth. And what? What did he say, Lord? Verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on me and overtake me. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm, what's happening? I'm getting built up. It don't look like I'm blessed, but I'm looking at the word that said, this is your reality. You get out of that and come back over here. Blessed shall there be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of my body, the fruit of my ground, the fruit of my cattle, the increase of my kind, and the flocks of my sheep. Blessed shall be my basket and my store. I'm getting built up. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Oh, the Lord shall cause my enemies that rise up against me to be smitten before my face. They'll come out against me one way and flee before me seven ways. Man, Lord, I'm feeling better already. Ain't nothing changed on the outside, but on the inside, I'm getting built up. This is good stuff. The Lord shall command the blessing upon me in my storehouses and in all that I set my hand to, and the Lord has, shall bless me in the land which the Lord my God has given me. The Lord shall establish me. Somebody say establish. As a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if you shall keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. You can keep going. But that's what I'm talking, practical stuff. Because if, if, I, if I don't show you how to do it, You'll get home and be like, what am I supposed to do? Pick up the book. Begin to declare it out your mouth. Begin to affect the atmosphere around you. Begin to change things around you. You don't have to wait for me. You don't have to let nobody lay hands on you. You don't need an altar call. You can have an altar call at your house. See, what it is, guys, listen. Jesus came for this reason. He did not want there to be any in-between between you and him. He didn't want to alter between you and him, somebody laying hands on you to be in-between. He wants you to know that you can access me anytime you want. The music is good, that's great, but you don't really need that. Pastor Tone, why don't you tell him where you got saved? I got saved in a jail cell. No praise team, no preacher. No altar call, just a man putting his knees on a concrete floor, crying out to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Jesus, save me, deliver me. And the power of God came right there in that place. And I had a greater transformation there than I had in any altar call. Me and Jesus, one-on-one, -on -one, no man, no oil, no music, just me and Jesus. And God wants me to reiterate that to this church, that you can access him anywhere. Anything that's trying to create a barrier between you and God is a liar. The word will build you up. And grow you up. And notice it said it will give you an inheritance. Say, you're, say an inheritance. 
the inheritance equals success on planet Earth. How's your word level? Listen to this. If there is an area of your life you are struggling in, I guarantee your word level in that area is low. If I'm struggling to walk in love, I have to feed my spirit with the word that talks about love. Struggling to walk in love. I go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. I'm patient. I'm kind. And begin to declare the word of it. You're not trying to change it. Notice it said it's the word of his grace. So as you put it in, the Holy Spirit will use it to transform your life. And you put that word in that love endures. Love is patient. Love is, is not arrogant. Love is not rude. Love is not overly sensitive. And begin to feed your spirit with that word. And what happens is your word level in that area will begin to rise. And instead of experiencing defeat, you'll be experiencing victory. But God showed me that people, that they want hocus pocus. They want, they want somebody just to lay hands on them and they get it. You got to work the word. You come to the altar and you don't receive your healing. You, you better not say that God's not going to heal me. You go back to that word. Amen. You go to the word. Maybe it didn't happen at the altar, but it's going to happen from this word. Yes. I'm going to work the word. Yes. This brother, he said that, you know, dealing with people dying prematurely. Listen, they got to work the word. Yes. You know how many people I visit in the hospital, I walk in the hospital, and I'm like, why are you watching this? Why are you watching a detective show? You need the word right now. Turn that mess off. Put on some healing word. You, do you like staying here? You making yourself at home? Or do you want to get out of this? You got to work the word, brother. Turn that off. Put on. They don't got it. Hit your phone, YouTube, and have the word going in you. So you can get out of that mess. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know exactly what I would do. I'm going to saturate myself in that word. It's time to eat. Pastor Tone, I already know those scriptures. I already know the love scripture. I already know Deuteronomy 28. Let me ask you a question. What'd you eat last week, Sunday? Just to say you ate chicken. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Can you live off the memory of that? See, a lot of us are being lazy and we're trying to live off our memory. And God said, you can't live off the memory of, you, in the natural, I can't live off the memory of what I ate last week, Sunday. I need a fresh word, a fresh meal for this day. Amen. And God said, my word is no different. You, yeah, it's in your memory bank. But that's right. It's just in your memory. I'm trying to get it in your spirit. Yeah. Put the word in your spirit. Yeah. Eat it. Look at your name and say, it's time to eat. Time to eat. Pastor Tone, every time I pick up the Bible, I fall asleep. That should tell you the devil's after you. You're on to something. That's why you're falling asleep, because he knows the power. Notice when you're watching your favorite show, you don't fall asleep. The minute you pick up the word, you fall asleep. Why is that? He knows the power in that thing. What you do when that happens, you wake up and say, well, we pick up where we left off. I fall, I get up, I'm not, I'm not leaving it, though. Pull up a chair, open up the book, and tell yourself it's time to eat. If you would spend more time with the solution, you would see your problems begin to vanish. If you would spend more time feeding your spirit, your struggles would turn into victories. If you would spend more time feeding your spirit, you would experience promotion and advancement instead of going around the same mountains. It's time to eat. Listen to this. If y'all got taking notes, please write this down. The man you feed the most 
will be the man who leads the most. The man you feed the most will be the man who leads the most. Now listen, man is a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit is the life of your body. If your spirit exits your body, your body will fall down and cease to exist because the real you is the spirit, your spirit man. Gentlemen, pull up Job 32.8. But it is the spirit in a person, the breath of the almighty, that gives them understanding. So the spirit is the very breath of God that started with Adam is the life of the almighty. So for you to neglect your spirit, you're neglecting the very life, your very existence, the very thing that's causing you to function on planet earth. Gentlemen, Romans 8, 16, listen to this. The spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. God communicates with you through your spirit, not your flesh, not your mind, not your will, not your emotions. God ministers to you and bears witness and gives you direction through your spirit. Gentlemen, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So God is joined to us by his spirit with our spirit. So the spirit is the main thing. For you to neglect your spirit, you're getting things out of alignment. We teach a class in the faith on call alignment. How to be in alignment. Spirit, soul, and body. Your soul consists of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Some people are flip-flop in their spiritual life because the spirit is not on top. The soul is on top. So they're led by their mind, their will, and their emotions because their spirit is too weak to lead the life. The body consists of physical parts and organs. The man you feed the most will be the man who leads you. Your spirit should be the leader of your life. Gentlemen, Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. That's interesting. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. So when God brings illumination, because God is light, he brings light, he's going to do it through your spirit. He's going to bring illumination. Lord, what do I do in this situation? It's going to come by your spirit. He's going to give you the answer through your spirit. That's why he's saying you got to start feeding your spirit because I've been telling you all, a, a lot of you all, you need to go that way and you're going that way, but you can't hear me because you've been feeding the wrong person. But if your spirit is weak and not nourished, then the soul and body will take control. Let's see how that looks when the soul and the body takes control. Gentlemen, Romans 8, listen to this. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh, listen to this, do mind the things of the flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, what's your mind on? What are you thinking about? But they are, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Listen to this. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see that? The carnal mind is death, but the spiritual mind is life and peace. You want peace in your life? Get back spiritual minded. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Why am I rebelling against God? Because you're feeding the flesh. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. 
But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you will, what? Die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Somebody say, I'm a son. I'm a son. Well, you're only a son if you're being led by his spirit, and you can only be led by the spirit if you are feeding your spirit man and your feet, spirit man is in control. Listen, guys, I would not be here right now if my soul was in control. I would not be here because, because what happens is you get attacked in life right. and then your emotions tell you to run. Right. 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 This is too tough. I'm out of here. I can't take this. I'm gone. I can't do it. No, 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 no. We need to stop. I ain't moving until I hear from the spirit. What does God have to say about this? I'm not going to listen to my mind. I'm not going to listen to my emotions. You know what? I'm going to do like I would do if I was making a major purchase. I'm going to wait 48 hours to let all the emotions settle down and so I can hear clearly from God and then begin to move. But a lot of us don't do that. We get attacked. Emotions rise up and we run. And then we wonder why in life I'm going around the same mountain because you never stay still long enough to see God move. Jump here, jump there, jump everywhere. Gentlemen, 2410, we're almost done. I got to get a faith home graduation in. If thou faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Let me say it again. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Spiritual strength determines the outcomes of battles. David defeated Goliath not because of natural strength. On paper, the fight looked like a mismatch. I'm sure in the natural, everyone put their money on Goliath. It was not so much with much David getting ready to fight Goliath. It was because of David's lifestyle that he was able to defeat Goliath. He was so full of God, when the battle showed up, David just manifested what he was full of. That's what I'm saying. If you will begin to feed, you don't have to worry about battles. If you just make it a lifestyle to feed your spirit man consistently, when battles show up, you'll manifest what you've been putting in on the inside of you. David didn't have to build his faith up. He said, he looked at him. He said, you're going down today. I'm full of God. I seen God give me the victory with the lion, the bear, and you're no different. You're going down also. He didn't have to build himself up. It was his lifestyle. A lion never attacks a strong animal. It always goes for the weaker. An animal that has drifted away from the pack. An animal that has been distracted. Feeding your spirit has to be a greater priority than feeding your flesh. Last scripture, Job 23, 12. This is the condensed version. Listen to what Job said. Now, remember the point I said, feeding your spirit is actually more important than eating natural food. But Pastor Tone, I'll die if I don't eat, eat the natural. You'll die spiritually if you don't eat spiritual food, Amen. which will eventually affect the natural. Listen to this. Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Church, I'll reiterate it. God is wanting you to mature in him. He's wanting you to take, I was listening, the guy I was listening, I don't know if I, I, I expounded on it, but the guy I was listening to, he was talking about principles. And when you get the principles of God, you'll have a successful life. Listen, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here, by here by the grace of God, of course, but I'm also operating in what God has taught me over the years how to operate in. And one of these things to keep me spiritually strong, some people say, man, don't look like nothing bothers you. I get hit. 
I get hit. I get some, some bolos. But I'm so full of God because I'm always eating that it becomes something that it just ricochets off me. And I'm able to keep on going through stuff that knocks other people out. So stand to your feet quick and look at your neighbor and tell them it's time to eat. It's time to feed your spirit. I'm going to make a challenge before I turn it over to the faith home. Some people have never done this. Some people might be like, that's like elementary. But listen, we all got to go up. I want people, I'm not trying to put a law on you, but faith without works is dead. Every day, this next week, open up the word. And read it. Find an area in your life. And I want you to, to get that word, get still before God. But the biggest thing, I want you to read it out loud. And read, like I did right here, read that scripture out loud. And you're going to feel your spirit begin to build up. You might start with one chapter, then go to two chapters, five chapters. I don't even know how much I read, but I know I'm built up. <laughs> My God. But, but listen, read that word and let the Holy Spirit build your spirit man up. And listen, try it for 30 days. Every day, read a chapter of the word. If you're reading chapters already, double it. And in 30 days, because sometimes we're not promoting because we're operating at one level and it won't sustain you at the next level. And God said you need to double up to go to the next level. Amen.